Where did this room <laughs> going on guys this is squeaky clean air uh mad squeaky clean um one of the biggest questions that i always get asked it's about how do i do hard lines what do i do with hard lines what are some of the things that i should be looking out for hard lines and um how do i get started well very important when it comes to hard lines right hard lines it's all about the line prep okay so you got to make sure especially when you're working with hard lines you got to make sure that the ends are deburred um look at line preparation so look at a lot of videos of what guys do for like gas fitters you know what they're doing for for that nomadic guys what they're doing when they're running hard lines how to prepare the ends of hard lines and what to do a lot of guys will use push through push to connect fittings which are great if the line is meticulous and it's and it's prepared correctly like if the edges are nice and smooth you know what i mean if there's no uh inside um let me zoom into this thing this obviously is not a prep line you're not going to stick that into a push to connect fitting because as you can see it's not smoothed it's not uh, it's not prepared correctly this is just what i use as a template right and i and i like to use the template and this is a template specific to uh to my bender and which allows me to know that how much and what distances I require in order to bend, how much of a bend I'm going to need. And that allows me sort of to, to sort of give me a gauge on where I should be aligning my fittings and various things, how I should be, you know, kind of bending my line and, and what kind of outcomes I'm going, to, I'm going to get, how much more I need to go and stuff like that. So step number one, make a template for your particular bender. Maybe even prior to that, get a good quality bender, okay? Do your research out there to see what kind of benders guys are using when it comes to doing hard lines, what's some of the ones that you like, what's some of the ones that they recommend. Good quality benders are, are weighted. Like I have a rigid bender that I use that I bought from a dude used um, somewhere on eBay. Um, it's a 30 year old bender, man. I paid like 50 bucks for it, brand new. I think they don't even make them anymore. They were like $150. The guy I bought it off of, he retired from, uh, he, was a, he was a legit pipe fitter. He retired from the business many years ago and he sold it off and I've been using it ever since. So it's going to be 40 year old bender that I'm going to be using that works perfectly. So good quality bender is I think the primary because you're going to get the weightedness that you need or the weight that you need to bend proper lines and get proper, proper, uh, proper curves. Step number two. Um, there's various types of hard line that you could use. You could use brake lines, which is the most common and the cheapest. You could use pure uh, stainless steel lines, which are very expensive. You could use AC lines if you can. You could use copper. You know, there's different types of coppers out there. And I think, you know, the types of hard lines that you guys should be using have been covered there for, for years. But uh, so what? Step number one, I guess, I guess have a good bender. Uh, step number two, um, you know, not in this particular order. Make sure you prep your line, especially if you're using push to connect fittings. Um, because push to connect fittings are made um, with uh, O-rings inside, rubber O-rings inside. And um, if your line is, is not cut properly and it's not prepped properly, you're going to actually uh, tear the O-ring inside and you're going to have leaks. So line prep is very important. If there's anything I can give you guys, prep your lines correctly. This obviously is not a properly prepped line. Search out some videos online on how to prep lines. Maybe if I have some time, I'm going to do one. So we've covered a good bender, okay? We've covered uh, the types of lines that are out there. We've covered a line prep. Let's cover fittings. So a lot of the guys will use non-dot rated or dot approved fittings. Probably it'll work most of the time, but you got to remember that the reason why a lot of these fittings have dot approval is because they're able to carry higher pressures, higher PSI pressures, okay? Um, all the basic fittings that you can buy for 2 or $3 are probably good if you're running up to 150 PSI. Well, what if you're in Canada and we have change of temperature and you all of a sudden start getting condensation and, and start getting a lot more gas, uh, because liquid turns into gas and all of a sudden your pressures are above 150. Like your tanks can go up to 210, 220 PSI. 
those fittings are not going to hold it because they're only rated to 150 psi right so make sure you guys try to stick to dot approved or dot rated fittings i love to use so excuse me i love to use compression fittings why do i like to use compression fittings is because once you have the hard line in there obviously you still still same uh prep applies once you have the once you have the hard line in there when you compress it it's less likely to vibrate obviously right when you have a push to connect fitting it's always constantly moving so that line is moving and it's going against and it's rubbing against that o-ring there is no o-rings when it comes to hard line there is a fitting inside here or a furl like this let me show you and that that's what compresses on your actual line over here that's why prep is also important for hard lines don't just think you can stick any hard line uh any line for hard lines and what this will do is this will compress on it and then the seal that you have here and also the difference between dot approved rating and regular compression fitting is they have this little uh this little uh neck in here that allows you to sort of put in the hard line through and then have a nicer seal once this is compressed and once this is sealed on here and of course follow the specifications for your particular hard line fittings or compression fittings because there's a certain amount of turns that you need to do in order for it to, to be set for for it not to leak and always leak test compression fittings but the point i'm trying to make is once you have it and once it's compressed that line is sitting there and it's not going anywhere and it's pretty much permanent resistant to vibration resistant to various things it's not going to come out why i like to use compression fittings right so use compression fittings so we've covered line prep we've covered uh bio grid bender some of the types of lines that you could use and compression fittings um if i think of anything else i'm going to make another vlog but for now this should be a good start for you guys and uh, this should probably explain a lot of the questions you might have and um yeah so those are some of the tips i could give you right off the top of my head when it comes to doing uh, hardline setups so all the best uh, i encourage everyone to try doing it and uh, have fun while you're doing your hardlines and uh keep trying that's the only way you guys are going to learn and uh, make some oh sorry make some templates you know templates based on your bender in order to make your life a lot easier when you're sort of following and you're sort of trying to create uh, a connection between here and here um, you know, manifold and various things, depending on what you're doing with your hard lines. So all the best and I'll uh, see you guys later. And uh, I always appreciate the likes. Uh, that's without question. And if you want to enjoy more content from me, um, then uh, subscribe and uh, all the best. Take care.